Oh, I miss my monomer. This, how stable it is. The reason why I like using 10 brushes for these, uh, um, these sets is because I have a lot of control. It gives me the ability to actually mold the powder. And it's very important with stiletto sometimes you have the tips. And then when you do the actual stiletto, it actually you get the tips get rounder. I think a lot of people just go like this with their fingers and just get it nice and sharp. Um, you want to get it as sharp as possible because eventually it's going to get worn out. And it's really stabbing people with this for sure. Get it nice and even so I don't have to do a lot of filing later. Powder gets picked up so well with this monomer. A lot of people think that butterness comes from the powder. It is true, but a lot of it actually is the result of the monomer. If you, um, the monomer is actually the biggest factor when it comes to how buttery your powder is going to be. Yes, sometimes the powder is mixed and it has a certain ingredient that makes it buttery, but the monomer is what is the biggest factor when it comes to that. So if you have an issues with your, if your powder is drying too fast, too slow, it, check to see what type of monomer you're using. Some monomer could be a medium setting, advanced setting. Mine's a medium setting, it sets a little bit quicker. I like it that way. I got a piece of acrylic in here from the last set I did. Gotta get it out. I do a two bead method. A lot of you guys say you have to do more than two beads. That's fine also. Nothing wrong with that. It's just I'm used to the two bead method. pinch off the powder when it comes to stilettos. So you gotta use the finger to kind of just pinch it out. Let me position the camera here a little bit for you guys, sorry. There you go. Oop. Very important. I always give a lot of attention when it comes to my application because it really does save me a lot of time later doing everything else. Take your time, guys. I have to rush this, this process. This nude I actually mixed myself. Um, it's gonna light a nude with a little bit of pink, and then um, I buy it in bulk at local supply, and then I mix it myself. Call it like a flesh nude. How much time do you take to acrylics? I'm um, a set like this. If I wasn't live streaming, I'd probably finish in about 30 minutes um, from start to finish. Um, usually, when I live stream, I lose about 15, 20 minutes. 
uh, because I'm answering questions and talking and doing clients. But if I were to work like in my own environment, I would be finished pretty quick. This is a standard, you know, medium, like long set, one shape, one color, no design. So um, once I'm done with my application, filing, drill work, and then just top coat and then the client's done. So sets like this for me, um, at my level, probably about 30 minutes, I'll be finished. Um, this set in this live is probably gonna be around 40, 45 max. Depending on how, if I'm like diverting my attention away or not. As you can see, I take about a minute and 30 seconds per finger. For my application. And I make sure that my cuticles are nice and flush. I don't have to do too much drilling later. Make sure that my application is smooth so I don't do a lot of filing. Just, you know, every little thing that's gonna save me time later and all the other excess stuff. Um, the hand filing, the drilling, that's, that, that is for you to make up, you know? It's not supposed, it's not really, you don't, it should be dependent on it. Most of the things you can do with, during your application alone already, um, if that makes any sense. This is my size 10 brush. Um, I like using size 10 sometimes when it comes to just like simple sets like this. It gives me a lot of control, especially with a uh, with a uh, stiletto. Because because stiletto, we can't pinch out the powder. It gives me the ability to control and mold the powder a little bit better. So I use a size 10. Um, majority of the time, I would use a 16, but this time a 10 will be good enough. I think precise. What crepe I recommend? Um, I think any powder that uh, doesn't have to require you to, to cap, I, I like. Um, I don't like to have to cap uh, acrylic. Uh, although, you know, it's like uh, a lot of people do it, it's fine too. But I don't like to have to cap acrylic. So for me, any acrylic that I have to cap, I use a lot of chisel. Um, not polish is great too. Um, there's a lot of brands I haven't used yet, but I stick with the ones that I, I know. I, I don't like working with clear as much. I try to avoid it as much as possible. Cause clear is one of those acrylics that's just really runny, hard to control. Um, so I try to stay away from having to cap my acrylic. <laughs> it's not, it's just, it's just my style. A lot of people are different, you know? Every now and different. Yes, I have to cap sometimes if I'm doing like ombres or something I have to encapsulate, but unless I have to, I'm not gonna do it. smooth I like my cuticles nice and flushed just like that see now do the pinky and I finish I don't know why I skipped the pinky <laughs> Oop, the bead just fell right off stock again jeez it just got restocked like literally two days ago although I'm moving to a bigger warehouse so I'll be able to stock up on more monomer and then also I'll probably have to do bigger size because people are just ordering like four or five of them to make a gallon I probably do 32 ounces soon oh this keeps on blurring out why is that
resume me bien. Okay, so one hand done. Let's go to the other hand. Focus you. One beat, huh? I haven't done one beat in so long. Let's do one beat to see. Ten brush, guys. A size ten brush. than two beating but I feel like one beating two beating is actually more efficient when you're doing nails because you'll be able to do the structure a little bit better um, you know you able to place the apex a little bit better and have more control of the apex so now the one beating you have to go back up and actually add a little bit more for the structure which kind of just costs you time anyways so Two beating, like one place where the apex of the nail is. Oh, Orlando class is almost full. Seattle class is halfway full. For yes, that are looking for the salon ready course, where it's very focused on application, um, structure, uh, focus on um, dip. Makes the acrylics. Um, it's two days. The Orlando class is almost full. The Seattle class, the guys in the Seattle area, I'm going to Seattle, is halfway full. Two days, you can always DM me for any information. Um, it's very hands-on. If you look through my Instagram and check my stories, you'll see what the classes really comprise of. I do little bits and pieces of the classes there for you guys. Beginner and advanced friendly. Beginner friendly, definitely great for advanced too. A lot of techniques, a lot of things I show in that class that can really level you up as a nail tech. Or if you're a beginner, start you off with the correct techniques and good habits to build your build your stuff up. Wow, 
there's people in here with spam and shit? Oh, this set's gonna be so sharp. <laughs> <laughs> um, the acrylic is actually a, um, a, a mix I do. So I like cover powders. Um, eventually I will have my own cover powder line. But right now I, I, I go to nail supply stores. I buy like they're like whatever generic uh, nudes and pinks and stuff like that. And I go home and I, I mix it myself um, at the salon for the shop to use as cover powder. Sometimes the, the what they have out in the in the supply store is not really what I like, but I can mix it. I can buy it for cheaper in bulk also. But um, I'm even working on my own acrylic. I want to come out with a cover powder line, which is some really good news and things that are, are very buttery and hopefully I think you guys will like that. Ooh, look at that structure, y'all. I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of cover powders. I think it's one of the you know most used powders on the market right now because a lot of people are doing designs and you know a lot of everything revolves around cover powders. Ooh, I have acrylic in this brush now. I gotta clean it afterwards. Not bad for almost two year old brush. <laughs> I'm one of those people that if I use something, I have to keep using it. I don't swap out unless I really need to. that crimp clean out the sidewalls there I'm in a weird position right now with this thumb I'm using my 100 100 grit I like using 100 100 880 works great too but 100 100 would be able to do it just just as well I'm just gonna go ahead and shape this up here and I'm just gonna switch side to side okay Let's do a two, three stroke. One, two, three, one, two, three. You don't want to stay on one side too long because you don't want to, with stilettos, actually very, very difficult. If you actually stay on one side too long, actually going to push it too far on one side. And no, nah. you'll, you'll lose the shape and, you'll, and the nails start looking crooked. So you got to be very careful with stilettos. Hey, Tandy, how are you? The little is sharp, guys. So we're gonna make it nice and sharp. Oof. So my application was so smooth. The shaping is a lot easier. It took about maybe less than three, four minutes on this hand here, just doing the shaping itself. That's the little, okay? A lot of you guys have like kind of an oval thing going on. It has to really come out straight. So you, you're kind of swinging, you're kind of swinging your, your file like this and it's creating an oval. Now you gotta go from the free edge all the way out. Give that nice straight, crisp stiletto. To that point not for everybody though this, this is the shape is not for everybody come on fam that's it right there
Hey, what's up, Amber? How are you? All my students up in here. Okay, okay. Oh, you miss talking to me on Clubhouse? <laughs> you know, I loved Clubhouse when it first came out, but it, it was just consuming too much of my time. You know, you, you, you know what I mean, too. If you've been on Clubhouse when it first came out, you understand it takes too much of your time. I took a break from it because I can get some work done, and I realized that, you know, I was able to get a lot of work done, and, you know, I do miss the Clubhouse community. A lot of my Clubhouse community, you know, was following me from, a lot of people my following on here on Facebook and Instagram is from the Clubhouse community, and, um, I, I thought it was a great platform, but it kind of changed a little bit crazy. A lot of drama during the time I was leaving. I wasn't all about that. I didn't want to spend all my days on there. And I helped a lot of people on there, and I met a lot of really cool people, too, networking and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like all social media, it, it turned to a little bit of craziness, and I didn't have time for that. <laughs> but, man, that brings back memories when you said that. Clubhouse, Oof, yeah. He used to spend all day on that thing. All day. It was, it was actually fun. I, I really enjoyed Clubhouse, to be honest with you. Not gonna lie. A lot of people use that for great networking. Then it just turned into kind of a free for all at some point there. Things were getting clicky, people were getting. Ooh! Nah, I'm not going to even go and get into it. I got out at a good time before it got, work. It got too bad. about finish here guys with the shaping um, I'm happy with that what I got here shape wise um, I'm gonna go through and go ahead and do some quick cuticle work um, my nails are so smooth I don't even know if I need to even drill on this bitch just look how smooth it is I don't even know if I want to drill on it it's just like cuticle work and call it a day look how cute this is <sighs> new merchandise Whenever I travel for my classes, my bits are always all over the place in the luggage. Now they won't be. I'm using my 5-in-1. This will be back in stock soon. Hey, how are you, Varush? Hey, thank you for the love from Israel. Wow. I shared this. Oh, thank you for sharing the beginner groups. Um, all my videos are great for beginners. Whew. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's get some some cuticle work in. It's important to seal in the products. See the cuticle. This will keep nails from lifting. More than likely, 90% of the time, I want to say 99% of the time too, if you get to do good cuticle work and you blend this in, now it's not going to lift that much. I'll show you guys later. I'll zoom in the cuticle um, when I put taco on. It looks real nice. I'm just going to lightly drill this. I'm not going to drill too much because I know that nails are very sharp. Surface are very smooth.
should probably be hitting around 40 minute mark right now. Which is not bad. Sets like this for average nail tech, I would say under an hour. 45 to an hour is probably a good optimal time for your money. Drilling with stiletto is a lot different when you're drilling coffin nails. Okay, you guys, you gotta understand the way you position your drill bit, the way you drill, the way you, you use this bit, it, it has to complement the the um, the shape. The shape is not. Do you drill the same way you drill in your coffin shape? Nah, it's not gonna come out nice and stiletto. You have to build kind of a spear like. That's a concave. You can't just do a flat drill across of it. Um, this bit is customized so it doesn't leave marks. Um, it's a smooth and remove. My own little pattern that I had the company made. I know this, I only have this in um, medium, but I will be restocking the fine and extra fine. Price is coming up. Probably end of the month, it probably should be here. But it's probably one of my favorite bits. All my students love it. Anybody else? I mean, you have to actually try it. I can't really explain the difference between all the other five and one bits you get out there. I really can't. I can try to, but you actually should try it, then you'll, you actually notice, okay, that's what he's talking about. But once you try that, you will never go back to the regular five and one bits ever again. And these bits last forever. This specific bit, it's like my first, the, from the first order I got. And I've restocked a few times already, so this is about over a year old, this bit. And once you get it nice and seasoned, oh, nothing nothing better than a seasoned drill bit, guys. A bit that you've been using for a while is like the perfect, you know, sharpness. It's not too sharp, not too dull. I remember I used to work at nail salons and the nail ladies used to be like, hey, I just got a new bit, can you use it for me for a couple weeks and wear it out and then give it back to me? I'm like, oh, sure. I never had to buy bits. They just keep buying bits and giving it to me and let me use it. Because they're scared to use a fresh sharp bit. But I was actually, you know, I have a lot of control with the drill, so I love using sharp bits. I just remember they want to buy my old bits, like for like higher than new bit cost. I'm like, no, why would you want to just go buy a new one? Like, no. We want one that's been seasoned. <laughs> To do that sell seasoned bits get the brand new bits and use it i think people will more likely buy those than the brand new ones okay finishing up on one hand Earlier, I really focused on flushing the cuticles with my um, acrylic. So now it's actually a lot easier for me to go through there because there's not a lot of acrylic in here. I'm just really going through and just sealing it in. You see that? That bit? How it's... You don't hear the resistance at all. Smooth and remove. Yes, my yes, I love my one bit. I have the other ones that I don't use. <laughs> yep, only my students will understand. Well, and anybody else that's used my bits before. But they will be restocked soon, guys. Don't worry. I have a bit kit coming too for those guys have been asking. Finally, I gave you guys a bit kit. Crazy. I, I, w I went and taught a class and I forgot my drill bits at home and I tried to use the students' drill bits. Oh my goodness. I just felt weird. I can I can I know it's the difference right away. That's one hand guys. Finish. Just gonna need a nice buff. Clean up underneath a little bit and then we should be able to top coat and Mm -hmm. 
Do you ship the UK? No, we don't, unfortunately. Buy one now, Dead Brush. Get preseason bit. <laughs> I wouldn't say a preseason bit. It's still a drill bit. That'd be a great deal if you guys buy a acrylic brush and get a free drill bit. <laughs> I might do some bundle deals though eventually for a lot of you guys. Um, I know you like a support. Um, my pricing is pretty much. What? You need to charge your phone. I'm gonna charge right here. Does anybody know what the timing right now? I think it works. should be uh, around 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 43 minutes. You know it's crazy that I can really gauge how much, what, what, what time I'm at. Because I know how, how long it takes me to do certain steps. I'm pretty good at it. Sometimes I'll be guessing and I'll be really on the spot with that. Last three fingers here, see on the cuticles. Um, what I'm doing right now is actually very dangerous. It's a sharp bit. I'm going very fast, but I have a lot of control over the finger, and I'm, you know, this is something I've done before. For a lot of you guys that are entering the industry or you're still working on your, your cuticle work abilities, it's okay, you know. Sometimes you'll cut your client, it's just normal. I still cut clients till this day, and I consider myself a master when it comes to drilling, you know, cuticle. So accidents happen, so make sure you take care of proper sanitation and clean it up. Don't be traumatized with it. I see a lot of nail tech get traumatized with a drill bit because they cut the client. Um, just be careful. You know, don't get a brand new spanking metal drill bit and go into their cuticle. Um, you gotta just work slower. Start out with the safety bits first where there's more cane bird, less likely to cut the client, and then work your way out. But just know that whenever something happens like that, it's just an accident, okay? It's not your fault. Well, <laughs> it's your fault, but Accidents happen. No, even me, I still cut clients till this day. Thirty-four minutes? Really? Oh, not faster than I thought then. So this will be done in less than forty. Hello, Corinne. Kind of clean out some of her excess cuticles too while I do that. My little version of Russian manicure, I guess. Just remember, drilling, you see how I'm positioning my hand? Pinky, drill holding from the bottom, very stable. I'm able to control the finger, move it where I need it to go. Never have to position your drill bit. You, have, you can always move the client's finger, okay? See that? I move her finger where I need it to go. The moment you have to reposition this hand, you're gonna cut the client, okay? This, if they're tense, and you gotta cut them once for them to learn, just remind them, this is a power tool, it's very sharp. Relax for me. I'm not telling you to go out there and cut clients, okay? Don't do that. <laughs> but 
but if, if you do if you do nick them and they're really tense let them know why minutes okay all right we are about done i'm gonna do some finishing touches underneath the nails here clean out any excess that you know from the filing and we're gonna do a nice buffer and then we're gonna do Yeah, no, that just comes right off. I don't need, I don't need to draw underneath. I just need to be fine. Straighten it out a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit from the tips and stuff like that. This is long. You didn't work on clients for this? Hmm. Okay. Let's give it a nice buffaroni. This is a 100, 180 grit buffer, okay? Since uh, my drill bit wasn't really, uh, doesn't leave behind scratch marks, it's a lot easier for me to buff with a nice fine buffer like this and get it nice and smooth. Um, ready for my top coat, my finish, my finisher. And that's really all it takes to do a set like this, guys. Um, most of it, as you see, is in the foundation of the work. A lot of it is in ability to control the powder. The steps that it takes are just very generic, fundamental, basic acrylic um, steps that you can take. Once you master it, you just repeat the same step over and over again, and then you'll be able to produce nice structured sets in under an hour, which is, I think, everybody's ideal. And when you get to the mastery level, you can do under 30 minutes, and you make more money. and clean there is some satisfaction when you do these sets guys it may look seem simple but there's a lot of a lot of skill and technique goes into something like this you know not everything requires you to do designs bling all that stuff i i i dare say in the nail industry um basic sets like this make more money because you actually can do it faster and you can do more of them compared to design sets that would take you a little bit longer. Um, you won't be make, making a lot of more money, that much more money compared to these sets. I can do 10 of these a day and make more money than I do five design sets. Less stress too. <laughs> I think this is the ideal for any nail tech that enters this industry to really focus on the structure and working with acrylics compared to having to try to compete with all these other nail techs that have been in the industry longer and they're doing these designs, they're wasting a lot of money buying all these supplies and trying to compete with somewhere that is not gonna benefit you. As someone that's growing as a nail tech, you want to make sure you master your application. So you need to do more, more, more sets. Don't assume it. I don't know what's wrong with the camera. 
Ne hat es echt davon? That's something not everybody wants to hear. You know, everyone wants to come in and do designs and all this stuff. Truly, I wish we could go back to this this right here. Some days, you know, this is literally what I do every day back in the day before we had, you know, all this design, all these products, all gel. We just do nice shaped structured nails clean crisp the class just paid money good money for it this was the days when you know you can't cover up imperfections with stones you can't cover up with stickers you can't cover up with designs all your imperfections any all your flaws show up in these type of sets you know cuticles, you know, structure, the way you lay acrylic, it all shows up. As a nail tech, when you're working, you can see these flaws, you know where to target on your next set, you know what to work on. Nowadays, people just simply just throw stuff on it, just try to cover it up. This is how I learned, this is literally how I learned as a nail tech, you guys. You know, being a nail tech, I actually learned from looking at my work, my mistakes. I try not to cover up any of that. That's like my like free feedback. Clients won't give you feedback sometimes, but you yourself can give look at your work and give yourself some constructive criticism. Just like that. Oh. You guys see? Sets like this can you go, this can you don't have to have a design set to go viral. A set like this can go viral easily. Very nice shape, beautiful, clean, manicured set like this. Boom, great picture, some nice videos. Yeah, beautiful. So clean, right? You're currently taking a shaping class. Really? It goes to get better with shaping structure and application. It's just shaping only? Interesting. You've been looking right everywhere for my nail lamp. <laughs> this nail lamp is actually a little bit harder to get. Not a lot of people produce these lamps anymore. I sold them for a little bit. I might bring them back. But man, this top coat, look at this. Thank you, Shirley. I see both of them. You guys wanna see the cuticle? I haven't put cuticle oil on yet, but flush them cuticles. You can go all the way in. You can see it's nice and sealed in. It means there's gonna, not gonna be any lifting. shines y'all okay guys I'll see you guys later I might do another set for you guys an ombre later so um like an iguana <laughs> this is actually a real person <laughs> stunning and elegant thank you uh, thank you guys so much thank you for the support um 